right, let's try this one more time. All the way back up to the top. So the journal that I'm looking at right now is an international journal, Qualitative Market Research, obviously published online in 1998. The title of the article is Functional Neuroimaging Applications and Marketing, Some Methodological and Statistical Considerations. The argument can be found in the introduction um, because of its non-invasive nature, well-characterized response function, sensitivity and speed, blood oxygen, dependent level. fMRI has become the gold standard in neuroimaging research, um, which would make it beneficial for the consumer because it's non-invasive, so it wouldn't be hurting you. Thus, the mess. Thus, this method involves comparing data acquired during performance of a cognitive task, it increases blood flow to specific cortical tissues, and um, that are collected during the baseline. <coughs> oh my gosh, I'm really sorry for that. Um, okay, <laughs> moving on <laughs> to uh, methods. Um, it uses the fMRI techniques and marketing um but it is describing that it's still in its infancy. Uh, results are very promising. So the classical fMRI study examining how brand information affects taste perception of sensory similar products. Um, well, it says that it's in 2004. But that must have been added since this was published in 98. Anyway. Um, majority of respondents selected Coke over Pepsi in a blind tasting. However, the brand was revealed around 75% preferred Coke. So that's the method. Um, they're using the fMRI um, to do brand studies. Um, so here they're talking about Demacio's um, hypothesis within the marketing context that it can either be pleasurable or, pleasurable or aversive um, associated with internal external stimuli, and that will guide behavior. Um, so the first MRI study was investigated neural correlates related to product attractiveness was conducted by ERK. I think that's how you spell it. Say it. Sorry. My goodness. Um, and then here we go through pricing decisions. Um, so as you keep scrolling through the article, uh, you'll be able to find, well, it kind of says here at the top. But if you read the whole article, you would also know that. And it is kind of an obvious answer that, of course, it's going to be productive for the producer because you are able to see what the customer, consumer is thinking. So neuroimaging cognitive techniques have great potential in marketing and advertising. This is because unlike conventional marketing research methods, neuroimaging data are much less susceptible to society to social desirability and interviewers' effect. Thus, is it, ex is it expected using neuroimaging methods to investigate which areas in a consumer's brain are activated in response to specific marketing stimulus can provide a much more honest indicator of their cognition compared to their traditional marketing research tools, such as focus groups and questionnaires. And that's also a good point um, because it is a non-biased opinion of whatever the producer is trying to put out there, considering that you can't fake a brain map. So lastly, we have use. Um, um, so if we go through use, I could for sure use this in my future research paper. Um, it has great facts all throughout, but I think ultimately it does explain why the producer would want to use neuromarketing, neuroimaging, fMRIs, um, and how it could really help um, your company market whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. Thank you.